welcome back in our last lecture we have uh, seen how small uh, prop size can be achieved in a helium ion microscope and what are the different uh, other factors that uh, uh, influence the ion beam size particularly because of the small aberration uh, diffraction aberration we could achieve much smaller size and one of the impor uh, other important factor for which we can uh, have much smaller diffraction is the uh, the smaller lambda value smaller wavelength uh, by using the ions in, in, uh, instead of the electrons. So, today uh, we will see the ion optical column and how uh, different uh, 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 parts are used to uh, used in the ion optical column for align, aligning the beam and to bring the ion uh, beam in, onto the specimen. In that regard today we will be uh, discussing on the beam extraction, how the ion beam are extracted from the source tip, then how it is aligned, the role of aperture, deflector, uh, stigmator and beam plunker. So, the, um, these are uh, the parts that are present in the column of a helium ion microscope. So, this is what uh, the function function of our helium ion micro uh, uh, scope, uh, optical column. Uh, the column role is to uh, make a fine spot of ion on the specimen and also to scan the ion beam on the specimen. So, at the top we have uh, source that is the ion gone and then uh, below that first we have a uh, extractor or uh, extractor is given uh, here a negative potential because the tip is at positive potential. So, extractor will extract the uh, ions from the apex of the ion source. It by applying the extract applying the voltage to the extractor a negative voltage to the extractor uh, first we ionize the gas atom and then we pull down those ions towards we pull down downwards. Now, the extraction voltage play a important role in ionizing the gases. If the extraction voltage is higher, then what will happen? Uh, field evaporation of atom from the tip will occur. A higher voltage would take out the atom from the surface of the tip. If we apply a lower voltage, lower extraction voltage, then the voltage is not sufficient enough to ionize the gas atom. So, an optimum voltage to be applied in the extraction voltage so that it can efficiently ionize the gas atom at the apex of the ion source or at the tip of the ion source and then pull it downwards. Now, for helium cases, for helium cases it is uh, approximately we should have uh, 4.4 uh, volt per angstrom the uh, uh, to 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 bring out to ionize the apex uh, the field the field at the apex for helium ionization for helium ionization should be 4.4 volt per angstrom. If we have more then what will happen? Then atoms will be evaporated from the tip and that is also important. Initially at the beginning when we do not do microscopy study or then this extractor is used to form a sharp tip. Initially our tip was hemispheroidal with a tip size of 50 to 100 nanometer and this extraction volt extractor is used to manipulate or create a sharp tip by providing higher voltage. In addition to that we provide temperature and pressure uh, a suitable condition is maintained so that tip is sharpened. Tip is sharpened first in a form of pyra pyramidal shape and then a trimer is created by applying suitable potential to the extractor. Once a trimer is formed, once a trimer is formed then the field at the trimer surface should be 4.4 volt per angstrom 
to ionize the helium atoms efficiently. And for, for the case of neon, so the field suppose, supposed to be 3.3 volt per angstrom. So, when this potential, uh, this voltage is maintained at the tip, then ions can be efficiently extracted from the uh, tip of uh, the, from the tip or apex and that can be brought it down. And this um, extraction voltage uh, is also used to make sure that there is no, uh, no individual atoms uh, sitting around the tip. So, a little higher voltage would certainly uh, will evaporate those forming a very well defined trimer. Once the trimer is seen inside the, micro, uh, my, uh, inside the microscope that a trimer is already formed, then only uh, the microscopic work begins. And once uh, after the ion, uh, ion beam is generated by applying the optimum potential, it should be aligned in a manner that it should come downwards in the, on the optic axis. First, first it has to uh, reach to the condenser lens. So, first alignment is done in a manner uh, by, uh, by mechanical tilting or shifting. We have three atoms uh, providing three beamlet. We do not need three beamlet, we need only one beamlet. So, the tip is tilted in a manner that one atom beam is coming downwards the column uh, that we will utilize for our purpose. So, first this is the mechanical tilting and shifting is done and so that the beamlet is coming downward straight and once it comes downward first we will have uh, the condenser lens at the at the beginning we, 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 we first we will find a condenser lens like as you see here once beamlet starts coming downward first it will encounter a condenser lens first it will, it will encounter a condenser lens and condenser lens will certainly condense the beam in this case ion beam and it will form the first crossover. This is the first crossover inside the column. So, beam is coming first falling on the condenser lens and it is forming the uh, uh, first crossover. So, once uh, it comes down below the condenser that is we have beam alignment process and this beam alignment is used so that beam directly fall in the optical axis so that it align along the objective lens. So, here the alignment process there is upper alignment and lower al alignment this is uh, just electrostatic alignment process by applying suitable voltage we could align the ion beam through the optical axis towards the objective lens. So, this alignment uh, upper alignment and uh, lower alignment have a, a, um, a set of components one for x direction alignment one for y direction alignment. So, it is uh, um, uh, suitable potential is applied so that beam is directed downwards along the optical axis. Then we have aperture below, below the alignment process we have aperture. This aperture uh, defines the ray angle of the ion beam ray angle of the ion beam and there, therefore, it also determines the spot size or prop size and also prop current. If uh, this aperture uh, is normally uh, placed little away from the condenser lens, far away from the condenser lens, but much closer to the objective lens. If the, uh, this aperture is placed uh, much away from the condenser lens, then we can have uh, flexibility to control the beam current or prop current along with uh, the uh, aperture angle much larger range. So, the aperture is placed little far, far away from the condenser lens as compared to the objective lens. And in some cases if there is two condenser lens are used, then this aperture is placed position between, between them, but first, but this aperture is present between the two condenser lens, 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 but far away from the first condenser lens. So, aperture function each two determines the 
alpha that means angle of aperture or divergence angle and also the prop current therefore prop size. Aperture material how on which material aperture is uh, formed? In case of helium ion microscope uh, it is aperture material is called AU for helium helium ion microscopy because uh, uh, gold aperture produce less contaminant less contaminant uh, and also uh, it has uh, um, it can uh, do the um, uh, beams uh, less beam scattering. So, gold aperture is used because of uh, reduced beam scattering and uh, less uh, contamination. However, uh, helium as helium ion will keep on uh, bombarding on this aperture they will slowly slowly uh, they will sputter the uh, gold uh, aperture and time to time that new aperture should be uh, used for the uh, microscopy purpose otherwise aperture diameter etcetera will keep on increasing and they may perforate it. For, but for the neon cases uh, for neon uh, again neon is much heavier uh, ions so therefore gold is not used instead of uh, it is used molybdenum MO molybdenum is used for for neon neon ion microscopy. So, so then uh, after the aperture we have object lens which will focus the beam to the specimen. Then below the um, below the uh, beam limi limiting aperture we have a blanker uh, we will come back to uh, the role of blanker as you see blanker uh, uh, first let us come to deflector that is the scanning scanning coil uh, deflector system deflector is used for any scanning microscope be it uh, scanning electron microscope and also scanning ion microscope it will uh, controls the beam to scan over the specimen and also it will control the magnification. So, by changing the uh, as you see by changing the angle uh, beam, uh, beam is tilted to a particular direction here alpha and it is done by applying suitable uh, voltage to the uh, deflector system and then be, beam is again uh, brought into the optical axis. Now, it will be coming with an angle to scan across the sample surface and this deflection angle this deflection angle uh, is related to the voltage across the deflector V directly proportional to V L is L is the length of the deflector Q is the charge and E is the energy of the charge particle and D is the distance between the opposite plate. So, by changing uh, these parameters one can change the deflection angle alpha or beta of the ion beam and that would this angle again will determine the determine the field of view field of view is the area which would be examined under the microscope or when we see a photographs that we can see the field of view and the, as you see the field of view is directly proportional to the distance between pivot, pivot point and the specimen distance between pivot point and the specimen. If the distance between pivot point and specimen is large then field of view will be much larger. On the other hand if it is small then field of view will be small and in this particular cases our deflector system is positioned uh, before the objective lens this is objective lens this is objective lens and uh, we have a flexibility to put the deflector system before the objective lens or after the objective lens. If we put the deflector system before the objective lens we have uh, it would allow us to have a smaller working distance smaller working distance means distance between the objective lens and the specimen this is this distance the where the lens this will be working distance WD this distance. So, by having the deflector system before the objective lens allow us to have a smaller working distance and smaller working distance would give us high resolution image. On the other hand if the deflector uh, system is present after the objective lens that means objective lens is now here and deflector system is below the objective lens that would allow us to have a, a larger working distance means the field of view will be much larger field of view much larger means we can have a much larger depth of field. 
So, if we can see a larger area, we can see a larger area and in this cases because we have flexibility to choose a smaller alpha, smaller alpha means our depth of field will be much larger, depth of field will be much larger. We can see a large area completely focused across the, across the area, but if in case of um, uh, in case of smaller alpha, in case larger alpha, larger angle of aperture, larger alpha W d has to be smaller, smaller and then we can have smaller depth of field or we can see smaller area, but it can provide us much superior resolution. So, in this way uh, whether uh, depending upon requirement deflector system can be placed uh, before the um, before the um, objective lens or after the objective lens. And this deflector again by choosing the angle by choosing this angle beta angle alpha beta angle we can scan over a larger area, we can scan over a larger area or we can scan over a smaller area. If we are scanning over a smaller area magnification will be less, if we are scanning over a larger area magnification will be higher. If we are scanning over a smaller area magnification will be higher, if we are scanning on a larger area magnification will be smaller. This is the uh, function of deflector system, then we have uh, uh, then we have stigmator. Stigmator is used to uh, uh, to correct the focusing like uh, uh, we have uh, uh, two sets of quadruple uh, um, in the absence of stigmator uh, in the abs absence of stigmator the beam uh, may not be uh, circle the beam can be like this beam can be like this instead of a circular beam. So, so this is called astigmatism uh, problem this, this is one of the aberration in microscope. So, the, the beam can appears as a ellipsoid tilting either in x or y direction this is the correct position correct one we would expect the beam should be circular. But due to astigmatism the beam may appear uh, as a ellipsoid tilting in any of the direction. Now, stigmator is used to correct this. The stigmator has a set of uh, two quadrupole fields uh, quad quadrupole fields is given oriented in 45 degree centigrade to correct the as asymmetric beam profile. So, this stigmator is present uh, uh, near the objective lens to correct the beam profile in a um, uh, helium ion microscope and this is also used for in the scanning electron microscope that we have discussed before. Then uh, next is the beam blanking and time delay of ions. First let us talk about the beam blanking. Again an electrostatic blanker is used to control the beam exposed duration. Uh, remember that in the helium ion microscope all the lenses are electromagnetic uh, elect uh, electrostatic lens, no electromagnetic lens is used because the effect of the magnetic field on the ions is very weak. Therefore, electromagnetic lens are not used in helium ion microscope or any ion microscope. On the other hand, we use electrostatic lens. Similarly, here a electrostatic blanker is used uh, to control the beam exposure on the specimen. So, blanker means uh, it will uh, blank the beam or unblank the beam whenever the beam is needed, then only beam will come and strike the specimen when beam is not needed. Uh, a blanker or beam stopper will be used and this is done by applying a potential voltage. By applying a potential uh, beam will be deflected away from the axis, beam will be deflected away from the axis, uh, axis and we have a beam stopper on which beam will fall. So, it is important that it is important that apply it is important that uh, uh, the applied deflection voltage corresponding to the pixel in the image exactly may exactly uh, match exactly to the physical landing position of the ion. Again corresponding landing position of the ions match the signal collection in the detector. Uh, detector. So, now uh, uh, um, there are two, two important function uh, of the electro electro um, static blanker. First is uh, first is the 
uh, how fast uh, this blanker will work. If I do not want my sample to be exposed, then I should quickly or as fast as stop the beam. So, this is what the speed. Second thing, uh, second point is that uh, uh, the first point is the how fast it will blank and second um, point is that uh, the blanker sensitivity. Uh, when uh, when we blank, it should not uh, uh, that means when it goes from uh, unblank to blank state, unblank to blank state, uh, it should not partially expose uh, the adjacent area. Like when I am uh, beam is falling and I am stopping it. So, during this process, uh, it should not uh, expose or it should not um, uh, it should not be the, uh, spe the side of the specimen where uh, the beam is not falling that should not be uh, get exposed. This is how sensitivity should be blanker. So, these two points uh, otherwise what will uh, happen? It will leave a blanking tail, it will leave a blanking tail and that is unwarranted. So, for this uh, 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 in order to reduce the blanking tails, uh, the position of the blanker the position of the blanker should be near the crossover point, near the beam crossover point. And second thing, in order to increase its sensitivity, the, uh, uh, the uh, blanking uh, blanker should work at the small voltage. A small voltage uh, should able to deflect the uh, beam from its uh, position to the beam stopper position. So, if these two are taken into account, then uh, electrostatic blanker will serve the purpose of blanking. And second point, uh, second important point here is that uh, the time delay of ions. Ions uh, unlike the electrons have a mass. So, their velocity would not be as high as electrons. So, therefore, uh, we, ca uh, we cannot uh, neglect completely uh, how the ions uh, starts from the emitter or its source and reach the specimen. So, that has to be uh, taken into account because it has a finite mass and kinetic energy. Therefore, their time of flight should be take, taken into account uh, unlike the case of uh, electron in our electron microscope. Fa first is that once it pass the blanker, let us say first blanker, uh, it will go from uh, blanker to the deflector this is let us say one time, time of flight 1. And then from the deflector, deflector another voltage here, here, here is uh, when no, no voltage applied or a particular voltage is applied beam will allow and other, other voltage beam will not be allowed. And then at the deflector again we deflect the beam to a specific position of the sample, it can go this point to this point or this can because it keep on scanning across the area. So, it will take another time, time of flight time of flight uh, will be different. And again, once the beam strikes the specimen, once the beam strikes the specimen, then we have signal generation. Like in scanning electron microscopy, here also we have secondary electrons, generation of secondary electrons. And those secondary electrons should reach to the detector. There are three things happening, uh, three, um, three different time of flights. And the third one belongs to the secondary electrons. Now, when we apply a potential here, that should match when the ions uh, positioning here and again when we apply a potential here, uh, it should match when the, that ion is reaching the specimen. So, if there is a time delay, then this voltage application is not applicable to the same ions when it uh, starts the, if there is time delay. So, so, therefore, it is very important that uh, 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 time controlling should be done in a manner that uh, landing position of the beam exactly matches to the same ion that is uh, um, passed through the deflector and the blanker. So, this is important and second important point is that the pixel dual time cannot be shorter than the time of flight through the deflector. Pixel dual time means uh, in a scanning electron microscope or scanning ion microscope. Uh, an ion beam stop ion beam strike at the specimen and stay it for a fraction of a second then go to next point. Now, if the 
if the dual time is very short, it cannot be shorter than the time it is coming from its source to the uh, to the specimen. So, uh, otherwise, if we are trying to uh, uh, trying the beam to uh, strike on a one point of the specimen, and if there is a time delay, actually we will be not striking to the same position, rather we will be striking to the next position because by the time the specimen uh, the beam has been mopped. So, this has to be taken into account. Particularly because oh, if we are going to use different type of ions like helium, neon, gallium ions and, and they are uh, at various beam energy their time of flights are different. As you see in the helium it is uh, 83 nanosecond on the other hand when gallium it is heavy atom it takes 346 uh, nanoseconds uh, the time of flight is completely different and again at different voltage also their time of flights are different. So, time of flights or time delays uh, must be taken into account in ion microscopic case unlike the uh, electron microscopic cases. So, in the operation of helium ion microscope, we must have an appropriate extraction voltage to extract to ionize the gas atom and extract the uh, ions particularly for helium cases it is 4.4 volt per angstrom at the tip of the gas field ionization source and uh, and there is this is the this voltage this voltage is called best imaging voltage because at which emission current reaches its maximum and below this voltage or above this voltage the emission current will no more be the maximum if it is below voltage it will not efficiently ionize if it above this voltage the energy will be utilized in the field evaporation for process rather than for uh, giving us emission current. Then after the uh, ion, ion beams reaches to the extract, extractor, then acceleration of voltage determines the landing energy of the ions and that would also determines the wavelength of the ions because at different um, acceleration voltage we have different wavelength. Then condenser lens align the source and create the first crossover, this is the first crossover and then beam limiting aperture, uh, beam limiting aperture here control the prop current, beam limiting aperture control the prop current and angle of divergence that is alpha. So, that would determine the depth of field and also the resolution of the microscope and deflector scan, deflector scan the um, ion beam across the specimen and control the magnification the same function as a scanning electron microscope. Then objective lens final lens focuses the ion beam on the specimen. Uh, specimen and this way an electron micro uh, sc a scanning ion microscope works briefly. So, in conclusion what we have seen that uh, in last class and uh, last lecture and today lecture uh, a 30 uh, kilo volt acceleration of voltage with 0.5 pico ampere current and optimal prop size of 0.35 nanometer can be achieved with a uh, angle of aperture divergence angle of 0.35 milli uh, radian. So, it could provide the same resolution. The prop current in helium ion microscope depends primarily on the source current from single atom of the trimer in the trimer and source must be very stable for helium ion microscope. It has to be very stable uh, little vibration or any type of noise would uh, uh, provide uh, non-uniform emission current and the only electrostatic lenses are used in helium ion microscope. Ion source has a significant effect on imaging or nano fabrication depending upon the what type of ions uh, is used uh, then uh, it could be uh, uh, either suitable um, best suitable for imaging purpose or fabrication process. Ion column parameter needs to be varied according to our required application. For example, we are using heavy atom, heavy, heavy atom such as gallium that was used in focused ion beam uh, application uh, in uh, almost all SCM use dual beam uh, focus and dual beam for um, uh, nano fabrication process and also for lithography and patterning process, but for imaging process helium ions are best suitable. So, uh, these are the references from where you can get more detailed information about uh, helium ion microscope or this um, 
gas field ionization source and also how the ion optical column works. Thank you.